is January a good time for you to reset and get organized? Or maybe with spring coming up, you're thinking it might be time to organize, but you're not really sure how to do it. Well, stick around because today I am talking with a professional organizer on how to get motivated, what steps to take, and how to stay organized all year long coming up. Hey guys, it's Christina Langridge here. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm so excited to be speaking with Suzanne Lindsay from Lighthouse Organizer. Suzanne is a professional organizer and I had her in my private Facebook group. If you are not a member, I will leave the link down below. But she came in and gave us all kinds of great tips and tricks on how to stay organized, how to stay motivated, how to get our stuff together, and really just kind of make our space a space that we love and feel comfortable in. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Well, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. So I have professional organizer, Susan Lindsay from Lighthouse Organizer. And Suzanne is amazing. I met her a few, well, I don't know, maybe like a year ago. Do you think, Suzanne? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And she is just an incredible organizer and so fun. And I think you guys are really gonna enjoy just learning from her. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, Suzanne. How are you today? Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, great. It's happy to have you. I'm um, located in South Mississippi where the weather gets hot and then cold and then hot and then cold. It's kind of chilly this morning. <laughs> chilly this morning? I was wondering about that. Anyways, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. So tell me a little bit about how you got into organizing and how I just became this business. And then you've just been so busy and blowing up over the past few months. It's been exciting to watch. Thank you so much. Yeah, the Lord has just blessed this business um, tremendously. I now have a team. Uh, I think a year ago when you and I met, I was working by myself and yeah. now I have four or five other girls that are working with me. So we can okay. work a couple of girls at one house and a couple of girls at another house. So um, a lot of my work is done, you know, in homes here in Mississippi, but I also have a virtual um, arm to it. I've been doing that um, probably right when you and I met. So it's been maybe a year and a half since um, it was October of 2019 that I started doing virtual. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I'm just supporting people um, um, virtually as they do the cleaning out and the organizing. I'm kind of just the support and the, um, the cheerleader from afar. <laughs> And that's been really a lot of fun. I've enjoyed that um, that part of it, and I usually do it on Wednesdays, and that's why I'm home today because I do my full calls. Yeah, on Wednesdays. So um, let's see how I got into this. Um, my children. We have five children, and my oldest was going into college, and it was one of those moments like, oh man, we didn't save any money to go <laughs> college, and. Um, so I had been home with them because we homeschooled a lot of the time and the younger kids had already decided they wanted to go to private school or public school. So they were all in school. And, um, I was listening to a podcast by Lisa Woodruff called, um, it's Organized 365. And um, as she was talking, she has, was offering this mentorship program to learn how to become an organizer. And I'm like, oh, that is so me, I could do that. And so um, I called her and I'm like, I would love to learn under you. Um, she has the Sunday baskets and um, all, she's got a lot of different paper products and stuff that she sells. So anyway, that was the start of the journey and that was three and a half years ago. And so now we're, yeah, we've grown so much. And you know, like right now with COVID, everybody's wanting to clean out. So. Um, it's yeah, kind of blown up and it's been a lot of fun. So I help a lot of people. Did you notice during COVID at all, like in the beginning of COVID, did business kind of decline a little bit? Actually, um, just, just yeah. pick up right away because people had time and they were home. Well, let's say March. Yes, I think it, I guess it did. I'm kind of thinking back through because we canceled a lot okay. because nobody knew what, yeah. what to do. Like we were, we had appointments. And then COVID hit and we didn't know much about it. My husband's a heart patient and he didn't want to be exposed. And I'm like, oh, wow, so we just can't fall. Yeah, for about a month and a half, two months. And then we started slowly just kind of going back in a home here and a home there. And now we're full force. We just wear our mask and mm -hmm. stay smart and, you know, use hand cleaner and all. So I'd say yes at first, but it was because 
we just canceled stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now people just want a lot of help. Yeah. And people are totally, they are like open, they wear their masks and you just go in and, and do, do, do your job and. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, everyone stay safe. That's great. <laughs> So we have gotten some questions because everyone is really, really excited that you were going to be here. Um, so I can jump into those if you'd like, um, and then maybe you can share some tips and some things that you would like to maybe help us out with. So, that. okay, great. So um, a question was, what do you do with things that you keep because you feel guilty getting rid of them or you know you'll never use them? I'm sure, I'm, I think that's something that we have discussed before, but you get a lot of that. Well. I think that you need to think through the root of why are you feeling guilty about it? Is it something that someone gave you? Um, most of the time, whoever gave it to you really doesn't want you to keep it if you don't want it. Right. But, you know, so um, you've got to figure out the why. Um, if it really is something that you just can't get rid of because it would hurt the relationship or whatever, um, I have one client where she has some really high kitchen cabinets mm -hmm. and her mother-in-law gives her lots of things and they have different tastes <laughs> and it would hurt that relationship if she were to get rid of all the things that her, her mother-in-law had given her. Yeah. So because that cabinet is so high up and she doesn't really store anything up there but can get to it if she needs it, when she knows mother-in-law is coming, she gets her step tool, she gets those things out and she puts them out. If it doesn't hurt the relationship and it is something, what was the other part of that question? Not just feeling guilty, but you might need it later. Or you'll never use it. So just having something, oh, well, yeah, knowing yeah, you're not gonna use it. it, yeah. If you know you're not gonna use it, I think that you've got to get rid of it so that you can make the space for the things you you want and you love and you and you need um and i'll show you uh, some pictures if we have time to go through some different closets yeah. that show the difference when somebody's cleaned out that space to make room for the things that they treasure i mean yeah it's just yeah it, it is life-changing once you do that um there's just no sense in keeping stuff you're not going to use because somebody right. can probably use it. We need to be exactly. good stewards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, someone's going to use it and someone will love it if it's not your taste. So, yeah, it's yeah. Never, never going to go I'd love with someone specifics. If somebody has some specifics that you go, okay, help me decide on this, then okay. um, feel free to, you know, type it in on the in the chat or whatever. Yeah, so um, Ellen actually asked that question. So Ellen, if you have specifics, feel free to share that so we can kind of give you, or um, Suzanne can kind of give you a better answer. Um, so Suzanne, if it's something that somebody gave you and you're just purely holding on for sentimental reasons, like, is there a good way to do that? Oh, I am a strong advocate of keeping it for sentimental reasons okay. because it cannot be replaced. Right. If it's something, yeah, that um, it's a one time thing, you can't get it on Amazon, somebody gave it to you, <laughs> and it means a lot, then I personally would love to see it where, like if it's a my mom's jewelry I inherited and I don't necessarily love the jewelry, I'll never wear it. Mm -hmm. So I created something that I could put on the wall that has her watches and some earrings, just things I remember her wearing as, when I was a little girl. And I don't know, I, if they're sentimental. I would never mm -hmm. want to get rid of them, but then if they're in the drawer, I'm not enjoying them. Right. So I did like a mosaic with them and now I have it at the moment. Um, but there's so many different ideas of stuff like that. Um, there's a girl on um, Facebook I'm trying to remember her scrap stack staff scrap staff <laughs> hang on scrap stash studio and she will take like clothing that belonged to um, like a family member that's passed 
she'll create these little stuffed animals that are just adorable. She'll make things out of baby clothes that you don't want to get rid of. They're just sentimental. And that way they're not stuffed in a drawer. They're actually out. Um, and when you see them, you're reminded fondly of that person. So that's, the, I like to do stuff like that if it's sentimental. Yeah. So you can enjoy it. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. And I agree because I've had clients that keep clothes that have either been like, their father passed away and it was a shirt that their father loved and they would wear that all the time. Or um, I had a client whose best friend passed away and he was holding on to this t-shirt that his best friend wore all the time. Um, and, you know, we ended up just framing that and putting it in his office. So it was kind of like a nice sentimental piece. And he, you know, can look at it during the podcast that they had started together. So it's almost like his friend was there. So yeah, I, I, I feel like wow. keeping those things that are sentimental are important and um, if you can find a way to display them and look at them rather than keeping them tucked away in a drawer or in a box that you're never gonna see it's not you know you're not getting any joy from it that way that's right I don't know if y'all just heard that <laughs> but my son did not know I'm on a Facebook live oh so hold on <laughs> if you will click the dog and go please I'm sorry my face is red I can feel it <laughs> only okay <laughs> Okay. Is there another question? Uh, yeah, there is. There's a few. Um, so another question that we have, well, actually there's a couple on this one post. Um, how do you get started when it feels like such an overwhelming job? Okay. Um, great question. Yeah. Um, what I do for my virtual clients is create a, well, let me say this before I explain Trello, is to look at it in tiny bites. Um, because when you make a small accomplishment, make a small accomplishment, another small accomplishment, all of that adds up mm -hmm. to a big, beautiful picture. So I think when you look at it as a whole, it can be overwhelming and you don't want to start, you know, you just don't even want to do. Mm -hmm. So like, if you, if that is you, then I would take, if you're talking about say your clothing closet, start with just your shoes do just your shoes don't try to do the whole closet right. then do just your shirts and then do just your pants on another day so that you're making those little bite size um, changes to make the overall room the way you want it um, now with my virtual clients I use something called Trello and um, which you could really just use a piece of paper and a pen <laughs> But basically, I'll make cards for them to know exactly what to do. So start with, and then I'll put on the card, you know, do this. And then when they finish that card, they move it over to the done column. It's just like putting a line through, you know, you've done that, you've done that, you've done that. So you're just breaking it down into small pieces so that you can do a little bit at a time and when you're you know when you get overwhelmed your mind just spins and yeah. if you've got it written somewhere it can help you go back and focus mm -hmm. on um where to pick up and go next does that make sense yeah it makes great sense it's um yeah i kind of use the same approach when doing closets you just kind of want to baby step it the whole way so it's not overwhelming and you know, if it takes you a month, then it takes a month, but it gets done rather than, because a lot of people, I feel like when they get overwhelmed, it just doesn't get done. They just kind of like, okay, I'm, it's too much and I, I can't do that. So I'm just not going to. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like taking smaller yeah. steps and just breaking it down. Um, you can see your progress and it's more motivating that way, I think. Um, and so you keep going. Right. And I will say, if that happens, if it's been like you keep saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And really years and years have passed. I mean, I helped a girl that had not cleaned out since, um, let's see, year 2000, 2003. And we ended up sending 30 bags of clothes to, um, it's the, it's not Stitch Fix, it's, and it's not Poshmark, it's uh, Thread Up. Thread Up, yes. Yeah. And she she got five hundred dollars. Wow! To, this is pre-COVID. Now I have sent some post-COVID, and they haven't even processed them yet. No, yeah, so they're, they're running, running way way behind. Mm -hmm. But anyway, 
my point to even saying that is if it, if you are to the point where you want to and you're just not going to and it's been that long hire a professional organizer in the area google it and you should be able to find somebody that can come in your house mm -hmm. and help you and if you don't want somebody in your house helping you i'll be glad to do it virtually and there are a lot of virtual organizers out there you can you know google virtual organizing and probably find somebody so but get help if you can't do it on your own it is so life-changing <laughs> It is life changing. It feels good just to purge, I think, often. I did that um, just, you know, in moving, there was so much to purge. And I thought, oh, it's amazing how much you accumulate. I think we lived in our house for six years. But it's just amazing how much you accumulate over a short period of time that just, if you don't set aside time to go through it and just purge it out, because the only thing I really would purge would be my closet. I didn't purge like my coat closet or, you know, office space or anything like that. So just getting rid of those things and taking time to do that, it, you feel so much better and it's more organized and you just feel like, I don't know, more productive and uh, just kind of having a good flow and zones for everything, I think is really helpful. 100%, yeah. Helps you get ready in the morning too. It does, um, yeah. it totally does, yeah. So another question that came in was, um, let's see, Okay, so what are some recommendations for purchasing containers to organize, label, etc.? Okay, um, I would measure the space and know what's going in the space. So uh, the fun part is the containers. So if you run out to the store before you have decluttered and you get all these containers, you don't really know what size container you need until after you've done the decluttering. So you need to do the hard part first and then <laughs> do um then do the find the containers and what i do like here in town like my i keep a lot of containers in my garage just things that i use continually mm -hmm. but um since most people obviously don't do that um i would start on google um i go to amazon i go to bed bath and beyond um I'll go to the container store, Target. Those are some of the main go-tos. Um, measure your space and you can even put in the measurements into the Google search bar. And sometimes that will bring it up. Um, use Pinterest and see what designs you like. I'm not a de decorator. Like I can't, um, I can organize you, but I, I have to, I have to copy a Pinterest picture <laughs> in okay. order to like, decorate. So, um, I would use those different uh, resources out there from, you know, Google and um, the container store has some great stuff too. Yeah, they do. It's such a fun store to go into. I love the container yeah. store. Oh, the dollar tree. Oh. There's a lot of people that afford the um, container store uh -huh. and if y'all will go on uh, YouTube there are oh, right. people who have videos yeah of organizing with just Dollar Tree products yeah. so I would try to check in there and see what they have oh that's um, amazing I never think of the Dollar Tree I know I, I, I've used a couple of things from there okay. but typically I'll go to Target yeah they even have the um, real small little uh plastic things for three for a dollar you know oh, and right they're right. great in a drawer mm -hmm. yes i love the the little trays that you can put in and into your yeah. drawers and yeah i love those those are those are really life-changing <laughs> because once a drawer is like organized and separated and then everything has its own place it's so much easier there's like some clutter not everything is like all over the place you're not scrambling for things so yeah i i found those things to be just incredible i got a bunch at target and amazon and they were just wonderful so yes exactly <laughs> i have um here let's see i'm gonna move my camera so you can see oh, okay this is my desk drawer and see i just put okay. those are those from walmart i mean from target okay. and just so like you said yeah just a place for everything makes a big difference yeah it really does and it's time consuming and easy to find yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and doing that is so fast i mean really it just takes five minutes yeah it does it really takes no time at all um, do you mm -hmm. take time to label things as well? Or do you just kind of know like, okay, well, this is going to go here because this is a room, this is the kitchen. So 
all my big stirring spoons or whatever go out to the side or like how do you are you telling me labels anything? That's a good question. Um, some things I label and some things I don't. Obviously, like when I just showed you the drawer, those aren't labeled, but yeah. You can get labels um, from the container store yeah. that will go on that. You can also use, um, you know, a label maker and label the insides of those little um, containers. Um, the I do decantering where you put the flour in or the sugar into a container. Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Okay. And so I of course label those um you know flour sugar confectioner sugar and like the day i did that probably two and a half years ago i had not labeled them yet and my husband got a hold of the confectioner sugar no. and he fried fish <laughs> oh, <laughs> <it with flour. laughs> so yes you definitely want to put uh, labels on that um, in my laundry room, I have some really pretty target baskets that you can't see through. So I do have a label on that. So my family knows this is the basket that has all of the extension cords. You know, this basket, whatever, light bulbs. Right. That sort of thing. So yeah, that's a good question. It just, it's personal preference, but it sure is easy. Right. I think. Yeah, to find things or to tell somebody, oh, it's over in this closet and this and it says this on it, you'll find it. Yeah. Dry erase ones like at Target, oh, uh -huh. they're, they're, they're white and you just write directly on them those labels and they'll go onto the fabric boxes. Oh, okay. Um, I've never seen those. I have them outside. I don't have any in here. But I also have like a cricket. Okay. Um, okay. And so I'll take I'll take these wooden ones from they're just like a little wooden disc from Michaels, okay. and I will use the Cricut to make vinyl letters and then put it on like pieces of wood and then hot glue it on to a basket or whatever. Okay. And that works really good. That's a great idea. Um, huh? You can there's so many options. Of yeah. Labels. Pinterest is a good uh, resource for that too. Yeah, Pinterest is great for a lot of <laughs> a lot of the organizing <laughs> inspiration and stuff. Yeah, I love I love Pinterest. Um, so another question is, what are methods to stay organized once it's been done? Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's just I would say at least once a week have a set time, put it on the calendar for 20 minutes. I'm going to maintain this area. So like your closet, you could take five to 10 minutes on a Saturday morning, every Saturday morning. You know, if you do that, it will stay caught up. If mm -hmm. you don't, then it's gonna look like it did before you organized <laughs> it, you know, yeah. and you'll do it again. I mean, that's just life because you're gonna use it. Right. And that's normal. So it's, it's, all, it's definitely the maintenance and making that a regular, um, habit in your routine. Okay, good to know. Uh, yeah, I think that helps to stay organized and keep everything looking good. And just, I don't know, I kind of, I think I do it as I clean house or as I finish a project and it just kind of all goes into its spot. I think I've just kind of trained myself that way because I used to be so messy. <laughs> so to be an organized person really took some time and effort, but now it's almost like second nature for me to be able to put things away and label them and have them done and I like doing all that now I'm kind of like a label oh. maker geek but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so someone I'm sorry go ahead no 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 go ahead go ahead no, I, it made me think about taking um like a laundry basket or something mm -hmm. at the end of the day and just gather everything put it in there and oh, then yeah. every few days empty it maybe that if you know if you're lacking yeah. time or something like that that's a good idea. Like, well, okay, what were you going to say? Well, somebody just asked if you can recommend a nice label maker or something that does like pretty fonts or, or something like that. Um, this one that I have is, uh, is my trusty one. It's a Dymo. Okay. But it's not like the most beautiful. 
Okay. I usually just use the block letters. I did some this morning, actually. But I took them into the other room. Um, it does do italics. You can bold on it. Um, but it runs about $32 or so. Yeah. And then the tape, um, you get it on Amazon. Um, you can buy the tape at Office Depot, but it's like a crazy amount of money. Yeah, that's expensive. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So you can get it less expensive, but the prettiest ones I think are made with like the Cricut okay. or um, the Silhouette Cameo using oh. the vinyl. Yeah, um, it's yeah they're, they're they're comparable. They're about the same thing, but um, and I say Cricut because most people know what that is. I actually mm. have the Silhouette Cameo. And I found it online in town and okay. got it for about 120 bucks. Okay. I think new was 300. Yeah. And when, even when I bought it, I was like, I really don't even know how to use this. I'm not sure <laughs> if this is really what I'm looking for. Yeah. And um, I have loved it. It has been the best purchase. Wow. Okay. So I, I would highly recommend if you really enjoy doing the labels and stuff. Um, and then, of course, you could always do um the dry erase one that mm -hmm. i was saying and just do pretty handwriting on it yeah. or maybe a friend has some really good handwriting that they can use <laughs> yeah that wouldn't be me <laughs> permanent marker on it so it doesn't wipe off and then if you want to get it off and you would use um fingernail polish remover and, and oh. it'll, it'll, off. it'll come off okay well that's good to know do you ever just kind of maybe make it any on like Canva or anything like that and just print them off? Or is an actual label maker a better thing to use? Good question. I don't, I've never done a label on Canva. Yeah, I, have, I haven't either. I was just thinking mm -hmm. to make it really pretty. Um, you know, I just use a P-Touch one that I got at Costco, I think in January. They always have them end of the year, maybe beginning of the year when people are getting organized. I think I found it and it was like 30 bucks and it had all this stuff. Like it had the label maker, it had extra cartridges and clear and white. Um, and I think there was like a colored one in there too. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. Um, but yeah, that's what I like to do all my font, my, my fonts, all of my <laughs> label one. Uh, what was that? Are they pretty, like the italics and all of that? Like, yeah, they do the italics. The there's like, a, yeah, there's I think five different fonts that it does. Oh, well then whoever asked that question might consider that one. Okay. Active. Yeah, if I can find it, I will put it in the comments or put a link or something so you can check that out. Uh, let's see. So this was a good question. What do you do with all the crap once you've cleaned it out? <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually um, take it to either Goodwill um, and there's reasons why I take it different places. One of my clients was um, on the board at Goodwill and she wanted things to go to Goodwill. A lot of people don't like Goodwill mm -hmm. and they want me to take it to, um, I've taken it to Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. um, the easiest thing, because a lot of people will let it just sit in their house. A, a right. lot of, I mean, I think the best thing to do would be call someone and schedule a pickup. Um, Salvation Army does that. We have a pastor in town um, and I just call him and he comes and gets everything. And then it, um, he, his church is in a lower income area. And so he has things on the ready when his congregation, either they know somebody that needs something or they may need something themselves. And so he never turns anything down. There's probably somebody in your area. That will I would think so. Yeah, I think most churches have something like that. Um, some kind of an outreach or something where they would, you yeah. know, either raise money through selling it or, you know, give it to people that need it in the community. Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's a good, good thing to do. Um, how long do you have to keep certain documents? That's a good question. Yeah, as far as I know, of course I'm not an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what I do is mm -hmm. I go on to Dave Ramsey's website. He's got a page that says what to keep and how long to keep it. And I don't have it right here in front of me, okay. but you can, um, maybe we can link that underneath. Yeah. We'll make a note. Okay. And it's called what now? What to it's keep Dave it. Dave Ramsey, um, how long to keep documents or something like that. Okay. I'll Google it and see. But typically it's like seven years. But yeah, I would think seven. Well, and I also think now because everything is electronic, um, maybe getting one of those 
little scanners that you can keep at your desk and kind of scanning important documents. And I think the point yeah. of keeping documents is usually to do something, you know, to track something or for taxes or something. And if you have it, like an electronic copy, it makes it a little bit easier. You can always back it up on like an external hard drive. So it's always safe. Um, yeah. So that yeah, that's is brilliant. That's on my list of things to do. I have not done that. <laughs> well, I started to do it and then my scanner broke. So I have to get another one. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it actually did make a huge difference. And I use an app, but you can actually take pictures and it scans like receipts and that kind of thing. And you can file them away, which actually came in really handy for taxes as well. And that one was called Genius Scan. Okay, I'm write that in yeah, so that was, that was helpful. Um, okay, so another question is the psychology of being organized. How how can being organized help? Or like, what's the psychology? Do you have thoughts on that? What's the psychology? I, I mean, all I can say is from experience. Because, I mean, for example, we had a lady um, that we're working with this week that had a stroke recently. Oh. And so she can't use her right hand. And so... Um, her home has just gotten out of hand and she can't get it cleaned up. It's circumstantial. Yeah. In fact, I'll say not one of my clients has, has been in, um, trouble with too much stuff due to the being lazy. It's always been circumstantial. Either they don't have enough time or they physically are unable, or it's just not their thing. Like they their mind doesn't think that way so they really can't you know do that right um but the um she was just in tears yesterday oh. just thanking us up and down and this happens so often um i think there's just a release when you don't have stuff all around you and the other thing that um i would say psychology wise is um there's an article, um, I'm trying to think who did this book. This is a life at home in the 21st century. 32 families open their doors and it's a study. I can't remember what college did it, um, but they, they studied stuff in our homes. And as the men walk through the house, um, they never really discussed a stressful feeling or anything like that, mm -hmm. but the women did. They would say, uh-huh, and it would cause internal stress, and they correlated that with, um, let's see, the cortisol level going up, which is also a weight gain yeah. and stress and all of that. So it's really interesting. Um, I haven't read it, but there's videos on YouTube, um, life at home in the 21st century. If anybody's interested in more of the psychology, it's real. It is real. You know, we do get stressed as women with yeah. things or, and even as men, um, I, if y'all were on earlier and you heard my son come in and just <laughs> kind of be silly, he didn't know I was on a live. Um, he is now homeschooling okay. and he's just we really had a hard time really getting into the school stuff mm -hmm. and i did not ask him to do this he cleaned his room yesterday he was like oh. i can't think i and yeah, yeah i know <laughs> like, <laughs> so cool. um but he realized that you know he needed some clear space mm -hmm. in order to concentrate on his work so he's not looking around the room being distracted or yeah. whatever I mean, it goes for all of this. But anyway, in this study, it was more women than men. Right. That's so interesting. I never thought about that. But yeah, it is hard to uh, feel good in your space and not, you know, if it's cluttered or you have things that need to be put away or out. I mean, it does. It really is distracting. You really just take your focus from what you're, you're doing or what you need to do. So that's really interesting that he cleaned his room on his own just to help himself focus a little bit more. I know. Um, we'll link, I'll, I'll look up the, um, where the article is okay, and thank you. we can put it under there. I just made myself a note. Okay, thank you. So we do have some other questions coming in. Um, another question is what about antique furniture that is passed down, but it isn't your taste and no one else in your family will take it. I feel guilty getting rid of it, uh, but don't want it in my house. Ooh, that's... 
That is a great question. I'll let you answer that. <laughs> um, I have actually two antique chairs in my garage because I they're they're not mine. They're a client's. Okay. And um, she's trying to decide exactly what to do with them. The consignment stores did not want them. And it could be that I just haven't found the right consignment shop yet. Mm -hmm. um, these two chairs are not in the best shape. They need to be recovered. Uh, I mean, they're wooden chairs, but the seat, like yeah. one of the springs is, is weird. And they're not huge chairs. I mean, I can pick them up with both hands. Okay. Um, so she is looking for, she has a friend that might be interested in recovering them. And then we're just going to give them to that girl to redo them and use them in her house. So I would almost suggest, um, you could, I mean, I don't know how comfortable you are working with Facebook marketplace or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, on Facebook, you've got local groups that are free groups or whatever. If you're not necessarily needing money for these chairs, you could put that on there and then someone that would really enjoy having it and recovering it or whatever it needs. And they could just come by and pick it up. You can even put it at the, you know, curbside alert or whatever and put it at the end of your driveway so somebody can come by and pick it up. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're comfortable with them contacting you, because you may want to know where, you know, the chair's going and that they really need it and they want it and that's yeah. um, valid too. Um, check, make sure you check all the antique stores and consignment shops because um, they may, you know, want it and you get a little money for it. Yeah. Does that help? Uh, no, no, does that help? <laughs> um, <laughs> Ellen, does that help you? Um, what, I know her question was like, how do you deal with that guilt of because it's being handed down and I can see maybe feeling guilty about that. I mean, I, not me well, personally, but I can see someone feeling guilty about that. Me, I just like, I don't like it get out of my house. <laughs> I don't feel bad, but, um, but you know, I can see that some people might. So is there a way to deal with that guilt? <laughs> well, that's probably more of a counselor question. Um, and what thoughts that you're having to create that emotion um, which I do have a friend that can help you with that too, the online, but um, if anybody needs her name. Um, but I would check with any family members and see if they want it. Um, and I've done that with several of the pieces that I've had. And if nobody wanted it, I let it go. So I had my grandmother's sewing machine. I didn't want it, it was heavy. I checked with all of my family members. Nobody wanted it. <laughs> And so I sold it to somebody across the country and I mailed it to them. They found it on Craigslist. Oh, wow. Um, I've got, I had my grandmother's bed mm -hmm. and I did have a family member that wanted it. So I, you know, I didn't ship it to them, but they're only two hours away. So when okay. I went to visit, I took it. Yeah. Um, uh, so I think if you have ask everyone, that would have an interest in it and nobody else wants it and they're not feeling guilty then yeah, you need to be curious about why why am i feeling guilty why and if you have the room for it then i mean you could put it in your basement or attic <laughs> if it's in your way and you need the space then go ahead and let go but it's one of those things that cannot be replaced so i am not gonna you know say that a client has to get rid of it because mm -hmm. it's not something that they can replace you know what right. i'm saying you've got to be sure yeah i agree you have to be sure about getting rid of it but i also would be interested to know and i don't know if you can tell us this ellen um why doesn't anybody else want it and why did you take it if you didn't like it or if it was just kind of forced upon you <laughs> and also um what is the sentimental value of it? Is it just because it's been passed down? Is it because somebody made it? Is it because, I don't know, I mean, somebody gave birth on it, was somebody born on it? Like, what is, what is the sentimental value to that? And because it doesn't seem like it's sentimental to you. So I'm just, I'm just curious if you want to answer that, Ellen, if not, I understand. But um, that'd be my question to you. I know you have some things that you can show us about closets, which of course I want to see, so. I just put together a, um, 
like from like before and afters. From before and afters. Oh yeah, those They're are my favorite. <laughs> Okay. I love your before and afters. So okay, can y'all see this? Is it sharing? It's starting to yes. Okay. So um this particular girl, um, her closet, she is a uh fashion blogger, so she gets a lot of stuff and you can see her white light where she does her <laughs> people, her stuff. And um I was just gonna show y'all maybe some of the different products. She actually, everything stayed because she had already decluttered. Okay. She was gone the day I worked in here. Um, and this is what we ended up doing there. So we took all of the shoes and put them on that white shelf. Look at the difference. It's just, where is the, no, it's not letting me go backwards. Um, but there's this. Um, clear shelf from Walmart that we buy and I've used it in so many closets. I used it on those um, the built-in and if you look way up high mm -hmm. we've got three levels of shoes up on the oh, yeah. top. Okay. okay so we just lined that whole thing with shoes. She just loves her shoes yeah, and um, those acrylic it's acrylic across the top well not acrylic but it's a clear plastic they don't really scratch and then the the bottom of it folds out to make this little um shelf and they stack so anyway that's, that's from walmart um what a difference looks, before and after wow that looks it looks so much bigger it doesn't even look like the same closet <laughs> True. <laughs> we put her slippers down there where she can get to those real easily. Yeah. Um, the sweater hangers have been really helpful and you can get those at Target or the um, container store. Those two yeah. have the best, really. All right, let's see. My little line that says to go to the next page moves on me. <laughs> All right, this is one that we did just a couple of weeks ago. And she also had already decluttered. I'm not gonna be able to do a big picture like that. You know. Okay, and we use those sweater organizers in there as well. You can see them at the end. Um, we put the purses up at the top. If you take um, like some paper or something to stuff the purses, mm -hmm. they'll sit up a little bit better. Um, and you can't see here, but just to the right of that sweater um, rack, back into the corner where there weren't any clothes hanging, mm -hmm. we put a basket there for her to put the paper in. Oh, we also had paper sure. in her boots, which now I recommend buying those boot inserts. You can yeah. get them on Amazon or whatever, but that afternoon we didn't have any, so I just used paper. I use I magazines did. in my boots to keep them. Yeah. Uh, old magazines. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then and like so, the, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, um, for my purses, we order so much stuff off Amazon. Um, all those little air, like, what are they? Air pillows they send with stuff. I use those in my purses to keep yeah. them. Like, yeah. Full. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cause cause I, those things bother me. And I never knew what to do with them. And I oh, usually yeah. pop them and throw them away because I can't wrap glass and stuff with them. Right, like, no. People are donating. Thank you. That You're is welcome. awesome. Okay. No, yeah, they're, I'm they're gonna great. I'm going to start using them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, there you go, folks. Um, and then you have a little basket to the side. You can put these little uh, puffy things yeah. or paper or whatever you use. And then you can restuff it pretty easily. Right. Um, I actually think I use some of these acrylic uh, shelf things up at the top right. I don't know if you can see those. Oh, where the shoes are. Are those shoes up there? Yeah. 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 It looks like there's a stack. It looks almost like they're floating because they're really clear. So, and it gives <laughs> yeah. it a really nice clean look. I like that. I need to get some of those. Okay, this is the same closet. You just couldn't see it was on the top right. These are her little um, hand uh, clutches and we put them in some acrylic file organizers. Oh, you can buy them specifically yeah. for clutch purses. I just happened to have in my stock from an office that we had done the week before and it worked beautifully. And they great, yeah. yeah. they do. Looks really nice. 
Okay, this is the closet that I mentioned earlier um, that she had not cleaned out since 2003. And she oh. sent that 30 bags of yeah. stuff to throw out. Okay, this is really fun. Okay, she has two closets. Okay. Um, it's supposed to be a his and a hers, but she's not married, so she has both. So we made <laughs> one closet accessories and the other closet her clothes. So this one becomes the accessories. Watch this, it was great. We made a hat wall in the left. We got our purses straight ahead and we got that piece from um, Target. You can also get it from Amazon. Okay. Um, to sit together. Wow. Um, and you can't see this on the this picture, but her brother had passed away and he was a, um, a highway patrolman. Okay. And she had kept his highway patrolman hat. Oh. And so we put it at the very top of her hat wall and she was just, just giddy because it yeah. just gave her happy, you know, thoughts about her brother. That's amazing. Um, and then to, to the right of this, Oh, there's the hat wall again. <laughs> to the right of that, that's in this closet. We did a shoe wall for her. Okay. And this is just from Lowe's. You take, you know, the, the what do you call it? The rail okay. and all of this is adjustable. So really we could drop that top one oh, down. Okay, right, yeah. That's to accommodate different shelf. sizes of shoes or another shelf, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a great yeah. idea. Okay, and this is the other side. It was also full of clothes. <laughs> and we just <laughs> cleaned that out and categorized everything. Um, on the bottom rack, you see this little white divider on the bar between the pants and then the shirts. Can y'all see that? Do you see mm -hmm. it? What I'm talking about? Yes. I'm going to put yeah. that here. Okay. You can get those at Amazon, and they're just like the ones you find in the shopping centers. And it's really nice to show an end of one kind into the other so even if you had long sleeves and you know separated from your short sleeves and then your short sleeves from sleeveless then dresses um i tend to put one of those between the different sections okay. and it just gives it um more of a shopping center feel and you can see exactly what you want you know you would know what section to go into yeah um we took these baskets she already had Those are really and cute. thank you and we used that wood that i showed you i just used a different shape and my vinyl um letters and we cut out what she wanted to put in there so she had some little pillows she decided i would like these pillows to be in here so we made a little uh, label to go with that so there's belts and i can't even read it blankets <laughs> i can't read the other <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Okay. Um, this is one that I did actually last Saturday. And it took um, her, the client and myself only when we did it in about four hours. That's the before and there's the after. So that was about two hours. And then the other half of it we did also. And I don't think I put a picture in this particular one, but we use those same little shelves for the shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, little baskets on the end down there, those off-white baskets okay. are from Target. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, and we're I'm going to put a shoe wall um, all the way to the right, just directly opposite of this wall. You're so still going to put one on or put one there? Yes, we are. How long has the longest project taken for you? Has it been like just a room? Has it been a whole house? Has it been? This room right here um she they had a guest room and uh, it had the bed and all all the furniture in here and i have the picture somewhere but i didn't put it in this little <sighs> lineup okay but this is so we started with this room and she wanted to make a closet out of it um they just right now weren't having guests and she's like and if i do they can stay upstairs mm. i really want a closet so y'all look at this we used um california closets okay and installed like that's the window there to the right mm -hmm. is that window that you see right there. So the windows to the right of this, you can see the light on it. So we did this whole shoe wow. wall. Oh y'all, this was a dream. This yeah. one did take a while because we had a lot of planning. <laughs> um, but it was it was so fun. Okay, so look at all those beautiful, amazing shoes. This is to the right of the wall. 
So we did it by color and type. Um, and you know, one thing I haven't told y'all at all, the best thing to do is to get all of the same hanger. Yes. It just changes. It's a huge hand. difference and it looks so good. Mm -hmm. um, and then having a little step ladder, especially because I use that space way at the top for yeah. a lot of my clients. Um, we'll, you know, bring in a step ladder for them to, to have. This one is so pretty and it's from the container store. Okay. It looks very boutique-ish. Yeah, that's yeah. what she wanted. She yeah. wanted something like that. And this whole doll of her jewelry. And then she has some shoes that are the real high-end shoes that she wanted to keep in um, containers so they didn't get dust on it. Yeah. And that was from uh, the container store. Okay. Okay, and that's another one. Um, so I skipped good. some of them. Yeah. This was the before for a client, and then there's the after. Okay. Um, wow. And she, yeah, well, we don't have all the same hangers in hers, but um, I do always love to do, you know, all the same hangers. Okay, one more. Okay. <laughs> do you provide okay. um, hangers and all of that? Do you bring that in, or? Is that something like a client will ask you and then you get them for them or do they, you just go off what they already have? Well, I can do any of that. Okay. Um, but I keep, um, I, you know, there's, I, I've got, I'm friends with a lot of organizers throughout the country. And this one that I really admire, she would keep a stock in her garage and mm -hmm. I liked that idea. So I picked her brain a little bit. How did you do that? And <laughs> I came up with my own system. So now I've got like a, like 400 hangers in my garage. And, <laughs> um, I know it's, it's crazy. So I've got all this stuff and I'll take it with me. Like uh -huh. I'll just load my trailer. Like if I'm working on a closet, we load the trailer with all the closet stuff. And that way my clients are calling it my magic trailer. They're like, what do you have out there in your little trailer? Um, <laughs> they don't really know. And I'll, I'll kind of bring things in depending on their budget too. Yeah. Some people want to yeah. use what they have and that is perfectly fine and we can make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, this is another fashion blogger and um, this was her husband's closet and I think we had already moved all of her stuff into here. She had this teeny tiny little closet. <laughs> so we just moved everything in and moved his out into the other closets. We did the big swap. Why did he then, have the big closet? That's what I said. Because Just the, the fashion closet, vlogger, right? <laughs> yes. And that's the little closet sense. was by their bedroom. So I think it might have been for convenience. Oh, but it was too tiny. And yeah. this was the three big room. Okay. So we just did an overhaul. You know, look at that. It was so much fun. Wow. We, um, uh, she, you know, she picked out that rug. She's very good at decorating. Yeah. Um, so and, cute. And now I look at the end of it. Okay. I so she it. got these baskets from Target and she uh -huh. spray painted them. Oh, okay. And then she put these tassels on that were from another dresser. Um, it's just, yeah, it was so cute. Okay. And then we did a shoe wall for her. So this is the same before. Mm -hmm. um, we had somebody come in and paint. And then there's the shoe wall. Um, we don't have all the um, inside, you know, the boots are not standing up on here. Okay. She also bought this little acrylic thing for her sunglasses. She oh, did that okay. Yeah. Oh, that and she made, she, she, one of the baskets from Target, she put right here so that when she took off her shoes and had some overflow or whatever, instead of them hitting the floor, she's mm -hmm. putting them in that basket and then re putting them on the shelf as she can. Oh, okay. Can yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, I think that's it. Kind of like what oh, you were talking yeah. about, kind of keeping a basket and then organizing throughout the week or the, when you have a moment or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, that's, that's so my, um, my fun. I know, I get so excited. Yeah. <laughs> See the transformation and- um, Yeah, and I love that. After they've done this and they're getting ready for the day and I get these yeah. fun texts, you know. Um, so yeah, if you haven't done it, it's so worth it. To yeah. Just get in there and clean it out. Yeah, um, I agree. Just tackle your closet. You know, it doesn't have to be huge steps and then, yeah, the end result. I hope you get inspired from all those photos. Those were great. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, right. those were so 
I love seeing all your um, before and afters and you know everything that you have on Instagram. It's so inspiring and I can't, I can't wait till I have my permanent house because I'm gonna call you. <laughs> you can come help me, set it all up. <laughs> wow, because I need help with my clothes. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> we can definitely work together then. <laughs> Exactly. Um, if anybody needs help, feel free to text me um, and we'll, I'll show you how to get on and do the virtual with me. And um, can I give them my number or you want to put it yeah. in? Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and give it. We'll, we'll add it as well. Yeah. Give us your Instagram, your okay. website, your phone. Give us everything. 601-454-7361. Shoot me a text and let me know you were on the Facebook group and I'll know how you found me. And um, then we can go from there. We can have a, and just give you the information on how it works and the prices and stuff. Um, and then you can find me on Instagram on um, at Lighthouse Organizer. Same for Facebook, Lighthouse Organizer. And um, same for the website, lighthouseorganizer.com. Makes it very easy. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Suzanne. This was so fun. It was so nice to see you again and to chat with you. and. Thank you for all the inspiration and the really good tips. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, I had so much fun. I really was expecting this to be like 15 minutes. I didn't realize we were doing a whole hour. So I, I didn't well, notice either. So. <laughs> yeah, it flies. It's great. <laughs> well, so thank, thank you. Everybody for joining. Yes, thank you everybody for joining us and definitely check out Suzanne on her website or Instagram or Facebook and reach out if you have some questions for her or want to work with her. She is amazing. So yeah, thank you again, Suzanne. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Isn't Suzanne so wonderful? I just love her. Her information is always so great. Her work is always so inspirational. I'm really excited that she took the time to speak with us today. So I hope you found value in this video. I will link all of Suzanne's information down below for you. Do follow her on Instagram because you will feel really inspired. And I hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to give it a like. Pass it along to someone who could use a little bit of organizing inspiration. Feel free to drop any comments down below. I'd be happy to answer them or pass them on to Suzanne as well. So thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and I will see you in the next video.